I said to the brother, may I pray? I just wanted to pray for them. But he didn't understand that. <laughs> and uh, so finally I gave up. And then we all stood up. We were, and I just said, I said, let me pray for you. And then I started praying. And uh, some of them continued talking while I was praying. And then when I finished, Brother Jacob, he said, <clears throat> He said, you, you believe uh, God, father, mother, mama, God, baby, God. I believe Bible, God of Bible, uh, one God. But I know you love God. And I didn't quite follow what he was accusing me of. I, I think perhaps of being a Catholic, you know, Mama God with Mary. I, I, I'm not sure, but I, but the point, the reason I tell you this is some of the you know we hear about the church in China or the church in Asia or this that and the other and so forth. But some of the churches, I mean, this is the extent of their knowledge or their extent of their understanding of the Holy Spirit and how they're, you know, to worship God. And so you can see what a job there is for the missionary, a job there is for the uh, established church to help them and to educate them and to teach them the word of God. Uh, we got to be with the some orphanages in Cambodia uh, and we got to be with uh, some Lao, Laos uh, pastors uh, with Maury Middleton, right on the border of Laos, they can come over into Thailand, and Maury and some of his uh, friends have built, uh, rented a building there in which they can have, uh, you know, 50 or more people come in and have teachings and so forth, and they're doing it now on a regular basis, and other groups are wanting to rent the place from them to do Christian things with the Lao people. But, you know, Burma and Laos and Cambodia have a persecution. When the first time Maury and I ministered to the Laos people, the pastors, one of them called us aside and he said, uh, this morning when I was leaving for the meeting, the sheriff or the the police chief, he came and told me that I had enough people in my church. And if I got any more people in my church, he would arrest them and put them in jail for two years and fine them an exorbitant amount of money that I'm sure they could never pay. And he says, and before I left, I led five people to the Lord. He said, did I do the right thing? <laughs> so some of the things you're faced with, you just never even thought of, you know. So, uh, but then also, as I told you last week, we got to go into Burma. That's why I extended my stay with Brother Wayne Crook. And we got to have meetings with uh, permission of the government. And there's been some changes being made in Burma, and I hope they're permanent, and I hope they lead to more and more freedom for the gospel and for the people, but uh, we were able to preach there, which is not allowed. And uh, <clears throat> again, there, we, there's a good brother and a good church and uh, so forth, some really nice people. 
Um, you know, the pastor said uh, uh, the church in the city, he's kind of a Pentecostal church, but the Baptist church was telling people, telling them, men, if you have long hair, you, you're not a Christian. You can't be a Christian. Because you know that verse in 1 Corinthians 11 that uh, it says it's a shame for a man to have long hair. And so uh, they were saying if you had long hair, you weren't a Christian. And this was troubling it, see. And so, but, and it was very simple to explain to him. But the point is, here we've got churches with just the very basic things uh, they don't know. And so uh, we need your prayers and the people like Maury and Wayne and, uh, and his wife Pam and Wayne's wife Carolyn and others. They, they sure need our prayers because they're facing, uh, like they're starting from square one. And, uh, but we had uh, some really good uh, fruit and some really good uh, outreach to these people and I sure thank y'all for your prayers and your support. <clears throat> you know, while I was there, they had the earthquake in Japan and uh, you know that and which led to the tsunami which leading to the nuclear meltdown. <laughs> and uh, this was quite a troubling time for everybody uh, and we had uh, and since I've gotten back there was an earthquake in Burma right near the area where we were and it shook some of the people up in Thailand and they're very scared and so forth <clears throat> and you know, uh, I just got to thinking about things that Jesus said in Matthew 24 about the end times, and he mentions about earthquakes. And I just want to go over that a little bit with you. And, uh, you know, when something like an earthquake, a tsunami happens, and, you know, uh, as we mentioned, the hurricane and Burma a couple of years ago, which were not able to have people come in and help. Uh, they, they are saying there were a million deaths as a result of that. Now, I don't know how accurate that is. Uh, I don't think the government was keeping up with it and how local people put the pieces together and come up with that number. But Anyway, it was uh, quite devastating. And you know, when things like that happen, especially if it's happening where you are, it's very easy to think that this is the end of the world. This is, it certainly might be the end of your world, uh, but uh, it, it gets you thinking about eternity and so forth. And so, I wanted to, I got to look here in Matthew 24, and the Lord is really quickening some of these things that I wanted to share with you. Uh, it says here in verse 1, uh, Matthew 24, Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Truly I say to you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world. So, you know, Jesus was at the temple and the disciples decided to give him a little guided tour <laughs> and uh, wanted to uh, show him the beautiful stones of the temple. But Jesus was not impressed 
and he said, uh, you see these stones, not one will be left standing on another. Now, you know, this is giving us some insight into Jesus as a prophet. You know, Jesus was an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, a pastor, and a teacher. He, of his fullness have we all received and grace for grace. And uh, so the, this is a time in which they're asking Jesus about future events, about end time events, and uh, he is answering them. Now notice they ask him three questions. Uh, he's just made the statement about the temple being destroyed. Not one stone being left standing upon another. And then they ask him, when will that be? And then they ask him, what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the world? Now, uh, of course, when the Lord comes again, it will surely be getting near the end of the world. 